I want to talk with you today about the two sources of the Pal Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Every time when we are talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, everybody say, well, that it's two, there are two sides. Two f if you hate Israel, it's very simple. Ah, the Israel are the bad guys, and that's it. But if you're a reasonable guy, you always say, well, it's complicated. There are two sides, two sources, two faces. Do you need two to tango? Okay, <laughs> the, the famous one. So let's uh, talk about those two dancers in this uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, in this Israeli-Palestinian tango. <laughs> <laughs> you liked it? I wouldn't accept it, <laughs> expect it. Y again, you will need to be very patient with my English. So let's start. So the first word that I want you to see, to learn, is mukawama. Mukawama, if you will check in the dictionary, the direct translation of the word mukawama is resistance. Okay? But if you will uh, read about it, if you will Google about it, if you will talk with people that they are, uh, know Arabic, you will see that Mukawama is not, a direct, uh, it's not only a direct translation to the word resistance, it's also a, 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 a word to describe a, a situation of refusal, refusedness, opposition. Just say no attitude, as I like to say. Just say no, mukawama. We will mukawam. Nahnu mukawam. Mukawama al shabia. We will resist. A resistance of the people. Now, if you will listen to uh, speeches of Arab leaders from the Hamas, from the Fatah, the PLO, the Palestinian Authority, it's even from Hezbollah, that they are Shia, is not Su Sunnis. I know it's complicated. Everybody will lose, use this word again and again, mukawama, the resistance. We will refuse. We will say no. And the we will say no, it's the mother of, and father of the conflict. Because when I'm looking at this approach, and check it in the timeline of history, I understand how it shaped this approach, the reality, between Jews and Arabs since the beginning, 83 years ago, when the British controlled the land of Israel, the Jewish Palestine, they, did, they decided to do a commission, acquire a mission to investigate why there are so much riots and pogroms, why the Arabs kill Jews all the time. So they made the, the Pill Commission, and the Pill Commission uh, investigated, they talked with, Israel, the, with Jews, with Arabs, uh, people in the land, after a lot of massacres in Hebron, in Jerusalem, in Haifa, in Tel Aviv, in Jaffa. And they, they, that was the first partition plan. The first time that they said, we will divide the, uh, 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 the Jewish Palestine to two countries. Now, the Jews were not very happy with it because theoretically, they were expected to have a very big country. If you know, uh, if you remember, in 1917, uh, in the Balfour Declaration, the Jews were expected to have a very big country that was, is now Israel and Jordan together. And Peel Commission was exactly the opposite, it was very small. But this, the Jews said, well, something is better than nothing, so okay. And the Arabs, of course, said no. Eleven years after the United Nations was established already, it was after the Second uh, World War. And again, they said, let's do a partition plan. Let's divide the land between the Jews and the Arabs. And the Jews this time, they say, wow, okay, let's celebrate. It's not what we wanted. But something is better than nothing. And we celebrated with dances, horror in the streets. And the Arabs said no. And the war of the independence started a few days after it. And now we will go to 67, 67, the miraculous 60, uh, six day war. Whenever this is the biggest victory of the Jewish, of Judaism ever, ever. Unbelievable war, unbelievable victory. We tripled our land in six days. And what was the winning side said after the war? In the seventh day of, uh, of this war, let's, <laughs> that's a good one. They said, we are willing to negotiate. Let's start uh, some kind of uh, talking with the Arab states. The winning side was willing to talk. And the losing side, didn't say no. They said three no's. This is the famous three no's of the Khartoum Commission in Sudan. They said no to negotiation with Israel, 
no to recognition with Israel and no to peace with Israel. The losing side, the one that was defeated, they said no. And the no approach, the mukawama, we will resist, the mukawama, the just say no attitude, continue all the timeline. In 88, it was the intifada, okay, the first intifada in 88. After it, the Israelis said, okay, the, the society chose uh, new leaders that would say, okay, let's talk with the Arabs. It was the Rabin, he uh, got elected, the Yitzhak Rabin, the prime minister, and they, that was the beginning of the Oslo occurred. Even here, a few uh, blocks from, from here, it was in a sunny day, uh, Bill Clinton from one side, Yitzhak Rabin from uh, the other side, Yasser Arafat, and they signed a contract. Finally, the Arabs, the Palestinians, they say yes. On paper, on reality, dozens of terror attacks killed more than 1,000 Jews, more than 1,000 Israelis, and more than 1,000 uh, got injured and wounded from this uh, Oslo occurred. And again, in Camp David, summer 2000, as uh, I'm sure, it's, it's, I'm sh I hope it's famous, Bill Clinton blame, President Bill Clinton blame Arafat for the failure. Ehud Barak, that was our prime minister, was willing to give Arafat, was willing to give the Palestinians more than Yitzhak Rabin was, one, uh, was willing to give them. But Arafat said, no. Nachnu, mukawem. We will resist. Let's jump not to 2007, old history. Let's talk about today. President Donald Trump is willing to give 50, 50, 50 billion dollars to invest in, this, in the Palestinians to solve a conflict. And what are the Arabs are saying? What are the Hamas is saying? What is the, Hizb the, the Palestinians are saying? They say, no, we don't want that. We don't want your money. We don't want your solution. We will resist. Now, the problem with this resistance is the hatred to Israel, this resistance, it's not a political view anymore. It's a structure of society. It's a way of life. It's a cultural issue. And this is a starting to be a very problematic thing. Because if you have a different a, 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 an opinion than me, well, that's great. We can argue. We can try to convince one each other. That's OK. I believe in small governments. The other one thinks it's not good. OK, let's talk. We can argue, but when someone is saying, no, this is my culture, I will resist. This is ve very uh, a problem. So this is the first dancer, the Mukawama. So much opportunities, so much opportunities to start talking, start talking, try to find one each other. And the Arabs say no, the Palestinians said no. I wrote here the disengagement in 2005. Look, in 2005, because of the Mukawama, because, because of the resistance, because of the no attitude, Israel, disengagement from Gaza. We uprooted 10,000 uh, uh, Israelis from Gaza. No one to talk, so let's do it alone. But it was an opportunity for the, for the Palestinians to choose life. But they chose terror. And terror brings blood. Terror and violence bring tragedies. People are dying. But who is the other dancer? Who is dancing with this phenomena? The other dancer is the one who make money out of it. The blood diamonds. The one who celebrate, the one who makes money out of the conflict. Now let's talk, for example, about UNRWA, okay? The right after the United Nations established a, a, a agency, special agency for all the people in the world, okay? The, uh, the United Nations High Council for Refugees. Refugees from, from Tibet, Tibetans, Bosnians, Pakistanians, no matter from where, they will, we will have a general international agency to solve problems of refugees. Only the Arab states say no. We don't want that in, uh, this agency will uh, work with Palestinian uh, refugees. No? It was in the 50s, in the early 50s. They said we, they, they will have a different agency, a unique, a, a unique agency. The Palestinians will have a different um, um, definitions to what is a refugee. So every refugee from every place in the world, again, Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, Mexican, uh, no matter what, give me a name, Japanese, uh, no matter, 
Nigerian, every one of those refugees, if, for example, he is immigrate to Canada, he get a, a, a Canadian citizenship, that's it. The UN doesn't count him anymore as a refugee. He got a citizenship. But if you are a Palestinian, if you're a Palestinian refu a refugee, yes, and you will get an American citizen, Canadian citizenship, Australian citizenship, it still uh, doesn't count. You will still continue to be a refugee. So the refugee benefits of, re of, of Palestinians is going from a father to a son, from a father to a son. This is created such a twisted reality that you have a congresswoman, yes, from Michigan that see herself as a Palestinian refugee. And by the United Nations, she is. And this is the reason that 700,000 refu uh, refugees, 700,000 pa uh, Arabs fled Israel in 48, and now the Palestinians say we have uh, 5 million refugees. Millions of refugees in the world just uh, uh, get uh, uh, solved, the problems get solved, they find homes, and Palestinian refugees got just getting bigger because they, they have a unique, unique definition. This business is run by a billion dollars a year, okay? A regular refugee from Tibet, Kurdistan, all the places, he gets $50 uh, from the United Nations, counted by millions, okay? A Palestinian gets more than 70, okay? The rest is go for salaries. So billion, billion dollars a year, okay? 30,000 employees, more than 700 schools in the Middle East, in Arab countries, to brainwash and educate uh, uh, kids that they are to believe that they are refugees. They are a 10 year old kid now in uh, Jordan, doesn't know anything about Haifa or Tel Aviv. And you, if you will ask him from where you are, he will tell you from Akko, from Tzfat, I'm, I'm from Jerusalem. You were not, maybe your grandfather was brainwashing children. Now this business, if you are uh, doing a, a business like this, you don't want the conflict to be solved. What, where, what you will do, where you will work. 30,000 workers, billion dollars a year. Second thing that is also very important to know is the uh, pay to slay Palestinian industry. As you know, terrorists who killed uh, Jews, terrorists who kill Palestinian terrorists who killed Israelis, they get monthly salary for life, for life. So the Palestinian exit is to killing Jews. Most of the mo money that they get is from foreign governments, okay, the foreign aid, and the, mo and the money is going to blood, okay? Give you an example. In 2011, the Fogel family was slaughtered, okay? Babies were slaughtered in their, ba in their beds, okay? The two, s the two brothers who slaughtered those babies will be in the age of 75 millionaires because every one of them will get a, a, a monthly salary that you will get to million, 1.5 million dollars every brother. So why to invest in education? Why to choose life when you can choose terror and make money out of it? Someone is doing business out of it. Let's talk about the BDS industry. Well, I can be a, a, a confused student that I, I am, I'm an activist, I want to do something, I don't know what, I want to fix the world. You know what, Le let's not be cynical, let's be good people. I want to change the world, I want to ma make the world a better place. So why, why do I need to uh, talk for the poor people in North Korea? Let's talk about the women in Nigeria. Let's talk about the, the children in China that, until, uh, that work like slaves for almost 20 hours a day for doing jeans. Why? This is, not, this is not fun. But if I'm hating Israel, if I will come to this celebration, then I will have lots of money. Okay? Fun. It's fun. Did you hear about a, a, a China, a, a, I don't know, Nigeria apartheid week? No, Israeli apartheid week. This is fun. I can be an average professor, okay, in <laughs> Columbia University. No one knows who I am. No one knows who I am. I'm just boring. The kids don't care about me. Going back to my wife and kids, I hate them, it's boring. But if I hate Israel, listen, <laughs> this is it. I can go to Berkeley, California, 
I can talk with people. People will invite me. I can do money out of it. This is a good business. Let's talk about Omar Barghouti, yes, the founder of the BDS movement. Okay? Let's, do you think this guy wants to solve the conflict? On what he will write books? Well, who cares about him without the conflict? This guy is doing business out of the conflict. He needs the conflict to continue. By the way, if I was a Palestinian, I would become a teacher. I would educate the kids, teach them mathematics. But it's a business. Now let's talk about the leaders. Look at the leaders of the poor, poor Gazan people, the leaders of the Hamas. Look at Musa Abu Marzouk and Khaled Mashal, the two heads of the Hamas. They worth together five billion dollars. Go to talk with the Jewish Voice for Palestine, those kids, confused kids. They care about the Palestinian children more than their, their own leaders. Well, they can feed Gaza for two years. They are richer than uh, African countries. Unbelievable. Abu Mazen, Abu Mazen, the head of the Palestinian Authority, 100 million dollars. Where is the money went from? Unbelievable. Unbelievable, okay? I, I, I ask myself how, how the money is, like he's getting the foreign aid, him and his sons that worth together 300 million, and they get the money from a, a, the European government, and they're like, oh, this dollar is for me, this dollar is for my wife, and this is for the kids, and this may be for the Palestinians. How they're doing it? Million of dollars. They are, became millionaires out of the conflict, so this is the reason that the conflict cannot be solved, or it's very hard. By the way, God bless, God bless Donald Trump for defunding UNRWA. God bless Donald Trump for the Taylor Force Act. That is all about, because, why? Because Donald Trump is a businessman and he understands who benefits out of it. He knows, go after the money, take them out of jobs. Maybe then the, the conflict is possible to solve. So this is the thing, resistance, the mukawama, the cultural say no. And the people who make business out of it. This is the reason that uh, you can ask a lot of Israelis and they will say, we don't hate the, the people in Gaza, we feel sorry for them. At the end of the day, two million people are hostages of a, a terror organization who their heads are billionaires. Unbelievable, unbelievable. So this is, the, this is the tango. Those are the two sources of the conflict. Now, why to defend Israel? Because Israel is the good side. At the end of the day, Israel is a good, the good side. Compare Israel to any other country in the Middle East. Compare Israel to our neighbors. Israel is a fortress of light in a dark and a violent area. <laughs> Israel provides more human rights and civil rights and stability to all of its people. Even the people, the Arabs in Judea and Samaria, they live better life than all what we are seeing in the, in the surrounding, in the area. Now, you can love Israel and defend Israel and be very proud of it because you will see that everyone that is pro American is pro-Israel. Every pro-Israel is a pro-American because we are fighting for the same values. Liberty, freedom, freedom of speech, stability, good economic, open society. This is it. So God bless Israel, God bless America, and God bless Turning Point USA.